you struggled or you are struggling with internet leads. That's not sales. Where's the PNC sales tip for these insurance leads? Welcome. Just want to talk briefly about PNC sales tips for internet leads. So this comes up all the time, but it's one of those things that has to be brought up all the time. A lot of the things to really get the telefunnel humming along and working is creating consistency. We've talked multiple times about how if we're not constantly inspecting, if we're not constantly training, then our folks are going to revert to order takers. I think that order taking in the insurance space, especially the PNC space, is is the modus operandi of doing sales and doing quotes. Quickly rush through their quote and then spit out a number. Now, that's not sales. All they've done is created a transaction. And if we're doing that, then we don't need anybody that's skilled to do that. In order to keep it legal, they need to be licensed. But the challenge is, why are we gonna get somebody licensed for them to become an order taker? We can't do that. So we talk about that a lot. So this is the key, right? Internet leads are a different animal. There's a lot of reasons why most agents do not like internet leads. It's because they haven't had success. With them. If you're anything like me, then you struggled or you are struggling with internet leads because they're this wonderfully packaged thing, right? We can get information that we can then turn into a quote really quick. Now, there's a lot of challenges behind that because it doesn't work the way it used to. I think when you used to get leads before, you'd make a call and you'd get a hold of people. Maybe not 100% of them or not even 50% of them. But what we're fighting now is especially in this world that we're in now, people don't like to answer the phone. And there's too many ways to avoid answering the phone, right? My phone, it don't ring. Pretty much blocks everybody. Even if I want them to call, it still doesn't let them call. And I have opened it up. I've changed all the settings. I can't get a call if I don't know them. That's uh, all Apple, right? Apple's dictating who could get through. It makes my life easier because I'm not getting blown up. But at the same time, it makes it much more difficult for a salesperson that's trying to connect with me. Even if I ask them to call me. What I do now is I have to have them text me and then I call them back. But that is something that depending on your carrier, you may or may not be able to do. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe. Right, make sure that you're following whatever rules, whatever compliance you have with your carrier because they're not playing around when it comes to those type of things, especially with texting. Because if you get popped, FBI, open up! and you're not following what you're supposed to be doing, you're gonna be in trouble and maybe lose your contract. So where's the PNC sales tip for these insurance leads? Well, we like to look at it as there are two sales. There's making the connection and then convincing them to get the quote and then the actual sale. And I think that most folks that are elbows deep in internet leads are gonna probably say the same thing if they're getting results from it that have really analyzed all of the analytics. That front end, that convincing them to get a quote can be tougher than the actual sale. So we have to get good at it. Right? We have to expect that they're not gonna want the quote. I remember back in the old days when we really started to dabble in the internet lead world, this is what would happen is we'd buy a bunch of leads, we'd call them, you know, hand dial, and we wouldn't get a hold of a lot of them or the ones that we would get a hold of, they wouldn't want a quote. We didn't really have a great formula for what to do when they say, no, I told them I don't want a quote. Now, likely we're the third or fourth person to call them and they've decided they don't like all these calls coming and they just shut down. It's a conditioned response to something that they now no longer think they want. No. They're gonna give you all kinds of different excuses, but this is the thing. You bought that lead and they picked up the phone. The first part of what you're trying to accomplish has occurred, and now you cannot take no for an answer. It's time to keep them on the phone by ignoring their pleas to not have a quote done. So how do we do that? We're gonna ask very specific questions, including their data, right? So we have their data in the lead, and we're gonna verify. They're gonna say, hey, I'm at work, I can't talk right now. Well, that's weird because they just answered the phone. Why did they answer the phone if they can't talk? So don't let that get to you, right? It's a conditioned response. So they're gonna say that. And you go, perfect. It's only going to take a couple seconds. I just have to verify a couple more things and I'll get that quote over to you. So it's agree, bridge it. And we bridge it by saying it's only going to take a second. It's already almost done, whatever. And then right back to a question. If you have their birthday, this gives you a lot of power because they're going to believe that you are legitimate. So the more information that you have that it's likely most people won't have, then that's going to help you a lot. If the birthday is included in the uh, lead, this is a perfect thing to ask. And I just want to verify your your birthday is December 25th. Perfect. I know somebody else has the same birthday. I'm going to stop it there because I think that that's something that
that needs to be unpacked, thought about, and then practiced. We want to make sure that our salespeople are not letting people hang up the phone and they're not agreeing with them that they don't want to quote. Can't let that quote go. And so that is another playbook. If something comes up and you have any questions, fire it over. Hit us up, support at the iDudes.com. And we look forward to seeing you. You are everything to us. So thank you. Bye-bye.